All right, hello everyone, my name is Billy, and today I'm going to show you how to do the Ladybug plugin in Grasshopper. Ladybug is a very powerful tool in terms of uh, radiation analysis, sun analysis, and wind analysis. Ladybug can be an alternative tool for Diva because sometimes Diva we have conflict with the other plugin in Rhino, such as V-Ray. Therefore, I recommend using Ladybug if you don't want to pay money for Diva or if you don't know how to use Diva. You can always download the latest version of the Ladybug uh, because sometimes they fix a lot of bugs uh, in the Ladybug. Therefore, it's better to download the newest one. And if you ask me if Rhino eat Ladybug in real life, I don't know. That's a biologist question. And then you want to go to the ladybug.tool map uh, and then I do want to type in Des Moines, Iowa so that you have the location of the Des Moines area and then you click on these little red dots you can download these data that like some good person have done for us we just need to download it and I already download multiple of them after you download it uh, you can extract it and you have like different type of extraction over here and then I would look at EPW. EPW is a file that you want to use later on in the plugin. And then I went to the Cybox. I downloaded uh, the Des Moines, Iowa model that our instructor uploaded. And then I clean it up a little bit to have it focus on our site. And I'm just gonna fire up the Grasshopper, very cool. First thing I want to do is that I'm going to split it into two screens so that's easier for you to see uh, the comparison between the changes happening to the two screens. First thing I'm going to do, go to Ladybug, number zero over here. Click on it. Click on Ladybug, Ladybug. Boom. This is the way for you to activate the Ladybug plugin. Click on it again and you want to do the Ladybug import EPW. So now we're going to import the EPW file that we have download it into Grasshopper. So I'm gonna put a file path. What a script. Very cool. Now I'm gonna defining where is that data. So just right click and then boom, pick EPW. Boom, our data has been transferred into the Grasshopper. Very nice. So now I wanna grab uh, I want to create a sun path diagram, kind of like what we did on the paper in the SciTech lab. Right? I'm going to connect the location with the location. And now I want to define where is the north vector it's at. So I'm going to create a vector, vector two point. Right? I'm going to make point. And boom. So we're going to have two point. Right? One go to A, one go to B. Right? And then we kind of want to display the vector. So vector display. Right. And then vector go with vector. Remember V is vector. And then we're gonna go the second point becomes the anchor of the vector. So first I'm gonna apply the first point, set one point. I'm gonna set that. Set one point. I'm gonna set over here. Boom. See the vector going up, which means we are correct. I'm gonna group it together. Boom, so that is gonna be our vector. And I'm gonna connect the vector to the north, right? Because it's important to show the program that the north is owned by these vectors. Very nice. So now we're gonna look at the hour, day, month, and then I'm gonna talk about the analysis period later. So for hour, how many hours do we have? 24, how many days do we have? 31, month, 12 months. Basic knowledge. And now I'm gonna put it at 24. When I plug it in, for the hour, you see how we have like this orange boxes that say, yo, hold up, there's something wrong with your data and you feed it to me. So if you click on here, night time. Yes, it won't take um, time at midnight. So we're gonna do 11 a.m. Yep, better, see? That means that, oh, you good. I like the food that you fed to me. And then for the, um, for the day, I'm going to do winter solstice. So I mean 21st, 21st per day, December month, yes. Which is the point where the sun go 
the lowest and the shadow is the longest. Um, so now I don't see my sun path diagram yet because now it's in the universe of Rhino right now. But then we need to bring it back down to the model. So why can't, how can we do that? We just type in point and then we just connect that to the center point. We want to assign that point onto the model. Boom. And there you go. Now we have the summer, uh, the sun path diagram. Very cool. All right. And then now I want to connect. Uh, I mean, what you can do right now is that you can adjusting the size of your sun path diagram. You see the sun path scale and the sun scale. So I'm going to put in five, put on five. And then I think I may just go to two because five is big. So maybe two. Two. And then you can see it's get bigger. And then boom. Sun also got bigger. That looks good. Uh, yeah. Only one more thing. Very nice. Ooh. Ah. Very nice. All right, now I'm gonna look at the sun ladybug sunlight hours analysis. So it's gonna ana uh, analyze the behavior of the sun onto the site hourly, right? So now we're gonna want to set the geometry and the context, which is our massing, all of these uh, pink shape over here. So we want prep. And then I'm gonna rename it buildings. Wait, yes. And then we kind of rename the we kind of want a surface because we need a surface for the ground level over here. So I'm gonna connect the surface to the geometry because it is geometry. I'm gonna connect geometry also gonna connect to the context. And then I also gonna right click on the building, set one uh, multiple preps because we have multiple buildings. Click on that, click on that, click on that, click on that. Nope. I want to click on that. Click on the shape. Shape, shape. Right click. Boom. You already assigned it. If you click on that, you see it's green. It's already assigned. Same thing with surface. Right click. But this time you set one surface. Boom. Yep, you're good. Awesome. Right. Now we're going to define grid space and grid size, sorry, and distance from the base. So I rule of thumb it's one for the grid size and 0.01, oh, 0.1 for the distance from base. Very awesome. All right. So now we want to see connecting the sun vectors and the sun vectors, which means we, because we're using the vector to show the direction of the sun path. So we're going to have to connect the sun vector and the sun vector, right? Ooh. And then we're gonna want to have boolean toggle, which is acting as a switch. You can just switch it on and off for your plugin to starting to analyzing the site and study the data that you imported into the plugin. So run, yes, very nice. All right, awesome. Now we see that the toggle turned to true which is it's already activated but now we see the problem over here if you look over here you see how the surface is all blue you are wrong so that's why you need to fix it well you're not wrong but because the surface is actually flipped upside down so what we need now is flip it back up which is easy I can show you so just double click on the true false exactly so now we gonna flip it type in flip flipply flip all right, so we're gonna connect the surface to the surface, and then we're gonna connect the output, the surface, to the geometry. Boom, basically, you just flip it, and then you run it again. Let's see. All right, boom, yes. Now we have something that look more like this, which is good. You see these little blue thing it is the shadow that is casted by the building itself. Yes, very nice. So. Here's the thing though, why does it look so grainy? Well, because of so many layers on top of each other. So what we want, it's hiding all these surfaces. Ooh, something wrong here. So how come my 
geometry does not have any analysis. Well, because if you look at here, my building did not connect to the geometry uh, tab. That's why I need to reconnect it. All right, now we have a different uh, type of looking analysis because now it's actually took the building into account, which is exactly what we want. But the thing is, they're still so grainy. What can we do? We're gonna hide the surface and the building. I select it, click on the disable the preview. Boom, looks way better, way better, right? Looks way better, looks way better. So what if I wanna do a different study? Let's say I wanna do different day and then different hour and then different month. Well, you just need to change these uh, sliders uh, into uh, like um, correct and reasonable month, right? Like let's say if you put like 50, it's not gonna read it because there's no such thing as 50 month, right? So if I wanna change stuff, I need to like double click on this to turn off the calculation, the analysis. So now I'm gonna change the number on this one. So let's say I wanna do, uh, let's say I wanna do 8 a.m., right? No, actually, I want to do 9 a.m. No, actually, no. Let me do... Yeah, let me do 9 a.m. Right? Actually, no, let me do at 9. Let me do 4 p.m., which is 16, right? Mil military time, you know? So... Very cool. Uh, and then, same day, and then now we got analyze it. Now, when you look at it, the shadow changed differently, right? because the time is now at 4 p.m., right? Shadow definitely change, which is kind of cool when you can do like a sun analysis like this. Very nice, all right. So that's one of the power to, powerful way of using Grasshopper to generating, and Ladybug to generate um, sun study, right? So now, what if I wanna do multiple analysis of the shadow and the sun study through a period of time in a day so or even in a different day uh, or month uh, let's say i want to do the same day but i want to do an analysis from 9 a.m to 4 p.m right or from 9 a.m to 3 p.m right let's do that then so how do we do that if you type if you type in analysis how do you spell it? analysis period you're gonna have ladybug analysis period you want to click on it right and then you want to copy the same information you have over here just cop copy it going down paste it and then going down here my bad going down here right so now we're gonna have the same hour which is 4 p.m and then we're gonna have the same, uh, what is it, uh, 21, is that the day? Yes, have same day, same month, right? Let's rearrange a little bit, so that makes sense, there we go. So now, what time, what day, and what month you want, it's going to from what to what, right? So I'm just gonna make another copy. Very cool, and then we have month, I'm going to keep the same month, right? And then maybe time, I'm going to change it here first. I'm going to want to go to 9 a.m. And then for the time, I want to go to 3 p.m., uh, 3 p.m., which is 15. I'm going to connect to the hour. I want it to happen on the same day. So basically now, I'm inputting the data that I want to analyze the sun path, the shadow, and the lighting from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m on December 21st, right? So that's that, right? And now we want to connect the analysis period to the analysis period. Very good. Very good. Very good, okay. Now we are gonna try to rerun the analysis that we have here and see how it's gonna computing with it. Usually though, I have these at the same number, so I don't know what's gonna happen with if, with, with these number collide with that. Let's see. 
Alrighty, I guess it's worked out pretty well. Nothing conflicted, which is very good, right? Looks very nice. You see how the shadow acting differently because of how the sun actually go differently. You can see the path of the sun over here. This is a very powerful tool again to analyze all these cool things. Let's do that. Boom, sharp with power. Very nice, that's why I want it. Let's do that. Yep, that's exactly what I want. Very nice. It's a good diagram too. Very cool, alrighty. So I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna show you guys, uh, I'm gonna show y'all cooler thing. Um, let's have that, let's bring that back up. So what if now I wanna study radiation onto the site, right? So it's the same principle that you're gonna need the geometry data, right? And you're gonna need the grid size, right? Oh, you're gonna need the distance from the base. And then you're gonna need the analysis period, right? Because we analyze it from certain period to certain period for the radiation. Same principle. So first of all, we're gonna need something similar to the sunlight hour analysis. We're gonna need the radiation analysis. Fact. Boom. Yes. And now we want something called selected sky matrix. Basically it's a matrix that the coder, the people who make the program already like put in together for us, which is kudos to them because I have no way in a million year that I know how to do that. All right, so I have been selected. Uh, selected. Ah, selected, let me see it, there we go. Ladybug selected sky matrix. Boom. That's awesome. We're down here a little bit. And now another one we're gonna need is cumulative sky matrix. Again, it's a condition for this plugin to work. Generating cumulative sky matrix. Nice. All right. Now I'm gonna connect the EPW file. So how I'm gonna do that? Quiz time. Yes, I'm gonna connect the file path with the EPW file. So I'm gonna connect from all the way from that very small little one to the EPW file. Very nice. And now I'm gonna run the analysis for them to run the data from the file path into this uh, cumulative ma sky matrix. So Boolean toggle, right? And I'm gonna connect that, right? So I'm gonna hit run. Alrighty, after double clicking on it, you see how it's turned into this study over here. This is the radiation study, right? You see, the radiation analysis. Yes, very cool, alrighty. So, again, you see all this grainy thing? Easy, we're just gonna hide all this beautiful thing. Yep, and then we're gonna hide all these too. These guys, it's too up for some reason. See, boom, radiation, man. Looks very cool, very cool. Very nice. Yes. Alrighty, that's a basic of it. Let me save it so that I don't goof it. So now, what else can we do with this? Well, we can definitely do a wind analysis if you ask me. So we can go and do, where's the wind at where we need it? There we go, ladybug, wind rose, boom. Yes. So now what we're gonna do is that we got connecting the wind direction, the wind speed to all the way from this data over here. So yes, let's do this. I'm gonna grab all of these, drag it over here. I don't care. Oh, hold on. Let me group it then. Group it. Drag it like I don't care. I'm very bad at organizing my script, so I recommend y'all to be better at this than I am. Alright. So I'm gonna have my wind speed with my wind speed. Boom. My wind direction with my wind direction. Boom, hourly wind direction. So analysis period. Again, we need these. This is like the meat of this dish. Or the main ingredient, I don't know. Let me it. Control C. Control V, ah, and control C. And yep, control V already, and then drag it over. 
Right. And then we got a connecting analysis period with analysis period. Very cool. I think we don't need anything else. And then we're gonna put a again Boolean toggle to flip the switch. Uh Boolean toggle run. There we go. And we want to analyze it from the central point of the mass. So we already assigned the center point for the sun path diagram, right? We're gonna just copy that, we paste it, then we drag it down, and then we're gonna assign a center point. Very cool. Analysis, hourly, hourly, very good. All right, let's double click and see how it works. Alrighty, after double click it, you're gonna have the wind analysis over here, which is very nice, right? It's on, it's like on top with the radiation. Let me see if I can turn on the radiation or not. Of course I can. Double click on it. Boom. There you go. And if you wanna bring your mask back, just show. Ah, show. There you go. Boom. That's your wind analysis, right? You have all the analysis that you can study over here. Very cool. So that's it for my tutorial. I hope that you guys enjoy it, and I hope it's not too hard uh, as I try to make it fun and make it as simple as possible for you to understand. Um, I hope this can be a helpful tool for you in your studio project. Um, and then Ladybug can be also used for studying building performances such as facade study and analysis for like how much sunlight going to your building and all that cool stuff so if you have any question follow me on instagram and hit me a text alrighty take care y'all stay safe